just want to make sure that we all see that we're good up top. It says recording. Yep. yep. Awesome. I feel like, okay, real quick, Alex, I feel like you could have fixed it last time. And you just were too embarrassed. I was too flustered. I know. No, no, no. I'm sure it was just a, I needed to reset my computer because it's been a, a minute since my computer was uh -huh. reset. I absolutely think I could have fixed my, my camera. Um, but you're right. I was late and I was embarrassed. And uh, the love of my life was sitting in front of me once again, only for me to um, just be confronted with the by fact panicking that panicking all the just, way down just just normal pan no i don't even think it's by it's at this point it's just normal panic it's just regular old <laughs> queer panic <laughs> once again uh, my undying love for logan like <sighs> any form every evolution of logan is my brand <laughs> We should get started. Yeah. We have already started. I know. Let's just do the <laughs> intro for the sake of uh, prosperity or whatever the you're supposed to say at the end of that sentence. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Dungeons and Degrees. My name's Adrian. And I'm Alex. And today, we are with DJ from One Shot's Tavern. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> you knew. Welcome, DJ. You knew. It's glad to meet you again. <laughs> absolutely uh wonderful to be here and to meet you for the second time and alex meeting you for the first time. i don't know how we yeah. missed it i was i was not buzzing around that's a that's a straight up lie i went to the top top floor of that party and i stayed there and i was like this is too many people and i just watched adrian buzz around and i was like good for him i'm gonna stay you're watching me uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> from above very phantom of the opera yeah, i was just watching all of my like sims interact with each other it was great and i just like yeah. zoomed up and zoomed out i was great yeah i was i was really busy uh for most of that party uh one i was running around saying hello to every mutual that i could mm -hmm. and then two uh christian navarro came up to us and was like hey uh, want to play some arcade games, and we were like, sure. So we spent the rest of the time playing arcade games. <laughs> See? I was playing so, Ski Ball. Yeah, it was fun. We were all doing the same thing. You Ski Ball? Ski Ball. I play any games. I, I was busy. <laughs> I had so many elbows to rub. <laughs> uh... It was good work. It was fun. It was fun. Uh, I would. I don't regret like spending most of my time just meeting people because I felt like some people I could actually see like working with in the future, and they're really cool. And you know, I, I part of me is like I can't miss anybody. Like, uh, <laughs> it's just tough. It's a lot. And I just yeah. I I mean, after that, my social battery was just fucking done for like for the most of the week like i don't want to meet anybody new i'm done <laughs> and we met an australian we adopted but like whatever <laughs> we did we adopt children evidently that's great yeah we just <laughs> take people in oh you're by yourself you're with us now come along <laughs> absolutely <laughs> I mean, that's that's what you should do. I mean, especially at something like Gen Con, mm -hmm. like there this year was like our first year going as as professionals. Right. Like, <laughs> uh, And that, that was it was super weird because like the year before we went as people who just wandered the floor for four days over and over again mm -hmm. uh this year it was like oh hello uh, here's a business card would you like it uh <laughs> and like networking and stuff and then talking about like andrew's game and then talking about our game like my game mm -hmm. and like and then of course like i was at the start playing games party because i am a game master on start playing games uh so it was just like three worlds collided and it was so overwhelming that uh we said no to going to a private party where there was going to be like a ton of people that we knew would be amazing to meet but we were just like we can't we need to go to bed right now <laughs> adrian and i looked at each yeah. other square in the eyes and we were like we need real breakfast we need to oh, not yeah. just wake up and go we need like to sit down <laughs> and eat breakfast. Yeah, that Sunday breakfast, it just like it was like the best 
biscuits and gravy I've ever had. I don't know why. It just hit different than yeah. just like, I gotta stuff this now. Like we we calmed down. We just fucking did our thing. And then and then we just like paid and we walked out and there was no rush. <laughs> it was yep. good. It was good. It was it was weird because no, it's not weird, but it's because I ate garbage the entire time. <laughs> I gained five pounds that weekend. Oh yeah, uh, brother. Even though <laughs> I walked ten miles a day. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, I didn't eat anything. Day, I like. Uh, yeah, that first day I I forgot to eat until the very end of the day, and I was like, "Why did my stomach hurt? What is going on?" <laughs> I mean, I made up for it later, so like. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I fucking ate. I put it that way. <laughs> but that first day, I was just like, oh, I got to be conscious about this. I'm going to be too busy to thinking about all the things I need to do. <laughs> no, I, I lived on a one Jimmy John sandwich for two days. Yeah, you did. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered. Just like, all right, I ordered this it. This quarter now. <laughs> I was like, here's my breakfast. <laughs> and that's it. And then I'd get to the end of the day. Amazing. I was like, oh, shit. We should have done that again, but no, we didn't. So, mm-hmm. uh, dear listener, please eat when you go out to conventions. Yes, drink water. <laughs> it's good for you. It's good for you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Talk to me about One Shot Stabber. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so, premise. I lost my job last year. Oh, no. Uh, in January. No, no, it gets good. It's good. Okay, it gets okay. good. <laughs> I was diagnosed with some stuff. Uh, along the neuro spicy end of the spectrum, yum, a yum. couple of things. Uh, and so like, I was feeling good in January of last year. I was like, you know what? <laughs> New leaf. Everything's going to be good. I'm going to get all of this under control. I'm going to be medicated in a few weeks, uh, for, uh, my ADHD and the tism and stuff. And it's going to be awesome. <laughs> I can't wait. Handed in my uh, <laughs> my work stuff, right? The the accommodation things, um, and then I had like a meltdown that day, <laughs> and uh, I was just overstimulated, overwhelmed, you know. And uh, that turned into uh, somebody being like, "Hey, you can't work. I don't. I can't work with this person anymore." And I was like, "No, that really makes me sad." And then they're like, "We're not going to fire you. Don't worry. We love you." And I was like, "Awesome!" And then. That person threatened to quit, and uh, they were kind of like a sunken cost fallacy mm-hmm. type of place. And um, I came in that Monday, and then at, while I was at lunch, like they came up to me and they're like, "Hey, do you have a second? And I was like, "Oh no!" Uh, and so that was like the start of the worst six months uh, for that me, really feels right? like an because HR violation. Like that really, that really doesn't. It that was really against their work. policy. If you like one of the one of the things that they're 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 that place was mm-hmm. if you have a conflict with someone or if you have a problem with someone, you specifically talk to that person. And if you don't feel like you can talk to that person, you have a supervisor come in and you talk to that person. Um, this person hated me since I had started there. Uh, and I found that out from all of my friends there. Like, there were people who were, like, texting me. They're like, I cried with our supervisor today. We both just broke down and cried because we missed you. So, and I'm like, I mean, I miss you guys too. But, you know, I, I was sad. And it was terrible. And I, I could have I could have hit the jackpot with all of it. I had turned in my accommodations. I did all of that stuff. But you know what I told myself? Oh, it's a bunch of good people at that company, and I don't want to hurt them, and therefore I didn't do it, and I felt bad, right? I talked myself out of doing the the, sm- the thing that was smart. Um, and then they got bought by a multi-billion dollar national company, and I was just like, I should have just gone for it. But anyway, all of that's to say, I needed money really quick <laughs> and so i started i started to become a game master for hire because uh 2021 and 2020 no, what was last year 2023 <laughs> 2023 was a bad year to get fired because like nobody was actually hiring mm-hmm. um i put in like i and this is gonna be like the most privileged sounding thing ever and it is it, it absolutely is and i recognize that mm-hmm. I never had a problem finding a job before, right? I I would put in an application. I would know someone, right? I right. Would, uh, some and I, all of a sudden, oh, I'm nepotismed into a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
and I mean, they, uh, they say that they say like it's not what you know it's who you know <laughs> it's who you know and for the first time ever i didn't know anyone mm. uh and i was not going back to my testing job because like i had to wake up at like four in the morning it was terrible so i became a game master for hire uh because i love tabletop rpgs uh, and because of that, uh, I like all of a sudden started to make a little bit of money. My wife has a job selling cars and she was able to, uh, you know, kind of float us and be so much more patient, uh, than anybody ever should be. Uh, you know, I like if, if I were her, I would have been like, you get out there and you go work at McDonald's or something. But instead, uh, she supported my dreams, and that was great. And because of that, uh, all of a sudden, I was full time as a game master for hire. I I was like running six games a week. I had fully replaced the income that I was losing from my previous job. Uh, I was like making a full time wage, and I was like, "This is awesome." And Andrew, my co host mm -hmm. slash one of my best friends since we were in high school um and the person who actually introduced me into <laughs> dungeons and dragons was like hey i'm a stay-at-home dad who takes on like contract work um do you want to finally start a podcast and i was like yeah sure why not you know I, I was i was plenty content just doing my game master for hire stuff but i was like that sounds like fun and so it, it was stressful uh <laughs> <laughs> as you probably know, especially Ooh. starting out, the amount of money that you have to spend uh, to start out doing podcasting. Uh, like, I already had the equipment, mm -hmm. but I was not ready for, like, the dropping my credit card on everything. <laughs> and uh, it's like, oh, okay, yep, your subscription to Podbean. Okay, got it. And then <laughs> <laughs> this and that and all, all of the things. And, uh, yeah, so our whole thing is we try out TTRPGs. Um, we talk to people who create TTRPGs and, of course, other people in the community that uh, we like to talk to. Um, and we just try to become better storytellers by absorbing whatever we can from whatever TTRPGs that we, uh, you know, play and steal from. Uh, yeah, yeah, because yeah, 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 yeah. That's the industry, mm -hmm. right? We steal... Mm -hmm from everything. We're inspired. We're inspired to <laughs> chase exactly. it. <laughs> but the thing is, they encourage you, right? Like, mm -hmm. like um, all of these companies, because they do the same thing, right? Like, none of them are coming out with completely unique ideas. And so, right. like, they encourage you to take mechanics and just be like, yeah, like, you don't legally have to say this, but, like, if you want to say that you, you were inspired by Cyberpunk Red, right mm -hmm. or cypher system with the game master intrusion they love that uh because like that 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 means that like somebody else uh <laughs> was enjoying their game and it might lead to somebody going and buying their game mm -hmm. and so that's what we do one shot tavern i know i gave you way too much personal history there but it's fine nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too much personal history which episode did here? you watch cuz uh, <laughs> we do that sometimes too <laughs> on my business card it says professional crier because this has been recorded way too many times for me not to include the crying bits Listen, I started a podcast just so I could trauma dump onto unsuspecting strangers. It's great. What what else are we doing in the year exactly. of our Lord 2024? Like, yeah, we're trauma dumping uh, with our friends. Exactly. On a public forum. Uh, <laughs> but we do actual plays. So, like, I do, like, Cypher System is my favorite uh, system that I run uh, that isn't, like, for money. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, uh, we we're gonna be doing more of that, and we release games, uh, or well, one of us is about to release a game, and then hopefully I'll be right behind uh, <laughs> in October after layout. Um, nice. And that's one shot tavern. That's 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 what we do. What was your first D and D character? Yeah. Ooh. Okay. So my very first D and D character was three point five. Uh, his name is Ariat Mithril Blood. Uh, he was a paladin. No, sorry, ranger. Because I was obsessed with rangers. Because uh, I thought that they only used bow and arrows. He was a ranger <laughs> elf. Um, 
and he was lawful good uh which immediately ran into problems because back then people really took that stuff seriously uh on alignments and so one of our players was a chaotic neutral halfling who would just do things all the time because he was a rogue um and <laughs> me and my friend will would argue constantly over it <laughs> As as one does when playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> mm-hmm. so. Do you, what's it called, when you start interviewing these individuals, how often are you getting ideas? Um, is it immediately? Does it like kind of have to sit with you? Um, how's that process for you when you start interviewing people? So Andrew and I handle things a little bit differently. Um, He has kind of taken the role of being the guy who has, uh, because we have like a document called podcast notes in our, in our docs folder. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it's all of our podcast notes ever. And it just keeps getting longer. And so we just scroll all the way down to the bottom. Um, and he will do like a bunch of research and stuff, uh, which is great, right? Like, I love that. Um, he he'll ask those questions. I usually listen and then I ask questions or like riff off of what they're asking or like what they're talking about, um, because I I just want to like talk to everyone as if like I've known them for thirty years of my life. Um, and so, like, Andrew kind of keeps my chaos organized uh, by, you know, making sure that everything goes on. But I'm, I'm very spur of the moment with just about any thought or conversation I have. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I don't hear the words in my head before they've come out of my mouth. Uh, and uh, it gets me in trouble, you know? <laughs> <laughs> talking about that's never happened ever that's that's you're the only person that experiences that that's crazy oh yeah wow (laughs) totally not a symptom of the adhd that i (laughs) not on this podcast for sure (laughs) we're uh, we're just professionals here (laughs) 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 no i totally i i 100 agree with with the like the vibe being the vibe for person as Unfortunately, Adrian does not get to be the vibe person. <laughs> the what person? The vibe. the vibe. Yeah. You don't just get to sit here and vibe. Oh, no. We did all the research, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's how that goes. Sorry. All all the research. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's fun to do the research, but also I forget what I researched and what I have to <laughs> ask. So that's why I'm so thankful you're here to, like, with the eyes of the listener or the ears of the listener. Yeah. Ugh. See? That was just a Anyways. really fancy <laughs> way of saying, like, I'm much uneducated. Like, that thing. <laughs> <laughs> you inhabit this space, but, like, you don't know what the fuck you're I'm talking not, about. No, I'm it's with, cool. No, it's cool. No, no, no. I, well, I, you're the one who put that title upon yourself. I will not take part of this. <laughs> okay? I gave you the cool title, and you're like, meh. Fuck you, Adrian. Sorry. No, you're right. No. Uh, Listen, the vibing thing has definitely got us in trouble before because um, I may be the vibes, but I'm also the emailer and the uh, person who get, who's who's told they have to put the things into calendars. And mm-hmm. I've made a couple of boo-boos that were not embarrassing to me because I didn't end up making those mistakes. But uh, <laughs> poor Andrew, uh, we had Bruce Cordell on. I don't know if you know who Bruce Cordell is, Enlighten but... Us. Uh, he is the reason why Planescape original mm. existed. Uh, he and Monty Cook were like TSRs. They wrote almost every D and D module in the nineties gotcha. uh, before they ended up uh, like they helped design uh, fifth edition before Monty Cook decided to go start his own company. Mm-hmm. And then eventually just kind of poached Bruce Cordell along. I accidentally put in the calendar, uh, Bruce Campbell, uh, you know, TV and uh, movie actor. actor I know uh, that Bruce. Bruce Campbell. <laughs> and uh, Andrew called him Bruce Campbell to his face. <laughs> and uh, 
Bruce was like, well, I don't, I, well, I'm not Bruce Campbell. I don't know who you were. <laughs> and like, this, this is like, uh, this is, this is a guy who has written basically everything I've ever touched in the TTRPG space. Um, so like he, Andrew was, was pr pretty upset, but we joke about it now. Um, and I try to do a little bit better, uh, to make sure that that sort of error isn't going to happen again. Um, but what's worse is Bruce received the, uh, the calendar invite that most definitely said Bruce Campbell of Monty Cook Games. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's fine. If you, it, it, it's fine. <laughs> I, I, I realized, <laughs> no, hmm. I realized the mistake the day before. And then Andrew had to go through and do all of his research and realize exactly who we were talking to. <laughs> and uh, I was like, yeah, didn't you know? <laughs> Oops. You look less, nothing like your pictures, First Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> I loved Evil Dead. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's so. Oh god. So, so great, so bad. <laughs> you think we could get Bruce Campbell on a D and D podcast? Do you think? I do you think he's he so not good. on the schedule? I mean, I mean, we just send an email. If they don't respond, then he doesn't respond. You know. Exactly. I think it'd be fun. I think he'd be a good like D and D table. Like I think just some sort of one shot would be really fun with Bruce Campbell. Oh my god! Absolutely. Right. Uh, that would be. I like you'd have hmm, you'd have to edit a lot because the man is so inappropriate all the time. Um, <laughs> Uh, but oh my gosh, it would be great. <laughs> like, is this live? No, it's not live for a reason. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Oh goodness! Uh, is there someone that um, that you kind of are hunting <laughs> hunting down to get on your pod, or or like getting the energy to ask? Mm. Mm hmm. Okay, let me think about this for a minute. Yeah, no worries. Because uh, the, there's definitely people. Um... But you've never met a person in your life, right? At this point, you've. We've asked the question. Right. You've never met a person. <laughs> never met a person. Mm -hmm. um, there's I'm trying to think of like people in like the professional space, and I think I'm starting to realize that I. And this is you know. I don't care as much about the big people anymore. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I care, and I'd love to have people on. Like, I'd like to have Luke Gygax on to sit down and, like, riff, right? Um, or um, someone, you know, maybe Chris Perkins or something. But we've kind of built our image off of, like, we're trying other games that aren't Dungeons & Dragons. And so having Chris Perkins on is probably never going to happen. Uh, but I really like uh, talking to the indie and like small games people. Um, and so one of them is the uh, designer from Morkborg, uh, whose name is escaping me, so I will never get him on the podcast now. Uh, he's going to listen to this and he's going to yeah, say... Yeah, he's going to find uh, this episode specifically. This episode. <laughs> uh, and he's, he's going to not do it. Um, ooh, the Fabula Ultima guys. Uh, mm. I grabbed their card, and that reminds me, it's sitting right there, so I need to email them. Uh, because I love Fabula Ultima, because I am, like, such a hardcore Final Fantasy fan. <laughs> and I have been since I was, like, seven years old. I almost got to play in a game. I was so close. And then I think I had some sort of scheduling conflict that I was like, wait, this, this wait, is wasn't my usual that time. Wait, wasn't the game that I was going to run? Uh... Mm, it was was with the the uh gosh what is it called it might have not been that game maybe i don't know there might have been two no was, i i asked a bunch of people to do the fabula ultima we haven't it was during that, the ronin's so. dead gaming i think is oh, okay that's who i was uh gonna play with well you're more than welcome to do the fabula ultima game with oh. us because i'm gonna run the press start adventure uh, mm -hmm. And it is so fun. It's so good. Um, but back to your question. Um, not really. Uh, I, at this point, I, I am having more fun 
talking to our TikTok mutuals than I am uh, talking to the big name people. Mm -hmm. And if I can get indie designers on and like people who are part of small companies, I will be satisfied. Uh, but we do have somebody coming on soon from Telsorian Games, um, the Cyberpunk Red people, mm, uh, okay. but not for Cyberpunk Red. It is for, hold on. <laughs> Shadow Scar. Uh, <laughs> and uh, basically we talked to the guy at Gen Con and he was so sweet. And he was like, hey, I've been writing this game since I was like eight years old and now it's published. And we're like, that sounds like a great reason for you to come on and talk about it. Mm -hmm. And then the Talsorian people gave us like way too much stuff for free. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually felt weird about it. Um, <laughs> but it, yeah, it was, it, was, it was cool. So um, yeah. Anybody, anybody is good. I'm happy to talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as long as they pass the vibe check. Yeah, and they're not mad about things like accidentally being called Bruce Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, little trivial things like knowing who your guest is. That's, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, before we started, we were talking about, speaking of like, trivial things that people get mad at over uh <laughs> we're talking about star wars yeah and the acolyte being canceled mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh i know oh is this Alex, news to you I'm... I'm so sorry oh. excuse me what no, words just came out me. of I'm your so mouth yeah so as of uh, about three hours ago they have officially canceled season two of the acolyte and i'm mad uh, because I love Star Wars. I I love Star Wars. I even like the prequels and the sequels and all of the shows, and it makes me happy, right? It always has. Ever since I was a child, my mother introduced me to Star Wars, and it became my personality forever. Um, I've ruined and, Alex's day. My whole no. fucking day. Listen, listen, there's very little... There's very little that I love more. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, DJ. I appreciate it. Look, look at my space. As if I don't no, understand. As if, too. as if this is not an understanding. However, the fact that they're removing Manny Jacinto's arms from us, the public. I know. I believe me. I I know. And I am. Ooh, I'm mad because, like. It was some of the coolest bit of Star Wars media that we have, like, gotten in so long. Like, they've been playing it really safe, and it's been fun and, like, enjoyable, but, like, there hasn't been any risk, and all of a sudden they take a risk, mm -hmm. and it's, like, a super diverse cast and a queer cast, mm -hmm. and, like, it has some of the coolest characters and the coolest, like, Sith Lord dude ever, uh, and Manny is i mean <laughs> listen i'm sh i'm straight i think <laughs> uh i don't blame you i don't blame you manny whew, uh and uh yeah and so like i i just i got on threads and i was just like um i'll, I'll read you my little uh you know thing <laughs> that this person replied to I swear to God, if they actually canceled the Acolyte, I am going to challenge every single board member at Disney to a friendly and safe lightsaber duel. That show was dope. Manny was amazing. And then I just kind of start to complain about how, like, how I'm invested in these things. Mm -hmm. I have seen every Marvel movie mm -hmm. in theaters. I have seen every Star Wars movie in theaters. I own almost all of them. I know I own all of the star wars media i can buy on blu-ray <laughs> like and most of the marvel movies mm -hmm. and all of a sudden this thing that i'm super heavily invested in just gets taken from me the person who actually spends money on this stuff not these annoying youtubers that i'm not gonna mention by name because <laughs> i don't want them to like anybody to go i wonder what that person says no you don't want to know what that person says <laughs> Um, it's trash. It's like, truthful. Yeah, it's it's always trash, and it's always like the most tepid, like 
uh, weird takes of like weird. It's basically like a section of the fan base, and when I, I can't even really call them fans, right? Uh, dipped their toes into the 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 cult of personality MAGA movement like thing. Not to get political. Uh, oh, <laughs> you're fine here. <laughs> On the heels of our last episode, <laughs> that is what it is, man. And, and like all of a sudden, it's just like this weird like entertainment version of replacement theory mm-hmm. that is so baseless and silly, right? And it, it upsets me because I, I I really love these stories, and so like this person replies to me, and it. <laughs> Uh, it upset me. Uh, it was, um, it's canceled, son. Cope harder. The majority of fans didn't like the Acolyte. It had bad viewership. It did not have bad viewership. It did not have bad viewership. It had, it had like three times as many viewers as the Marvel shows on Disney+. Plus. It had 30 many, m- million viewers. That is substantial. Yeah. Uh, and it was like, uh, it, it had bad viewership. Understand how business works and oh! i just lost it because this is the first time anybody has ever like come at me uh with their really and this is and like of course i checked over the profile and their their rage bait like reviewer and uh <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah so i uh, i immediately was like listen you people are so genuinely like insufferable because like you decided to take time out of your day to search the whatever threads considers a hashtag to be mm-hmm. to find somebody who was upset by the fact that a show they liked was canceled just so you can poop all over me right and uh to be like oh, oh, oh and i was just like oh man like and i i i drilled into him a bit um and uh, may have just gone minorly too far. Um, <laughs> but you know what? Uh, and I was like, as somebody who went to school for both film and business, right? Go away. <laughs> Grow up. Uh, and yeah, so I'm very passionate about the things that I love. Um, <laughs> and I, I don't think Star Wars is above criticism. No. I absolutely think that, like, yeah, there are things about the sequels that I wish were done better. Um, But, like, they weren't. And we can enjoy what we got. And we could move on to everything else. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that's it. Like, that's that's how you consume entertainment when it's subpar. Right? Or if you think it's subpar. I don't think the sequels were subpar. I think that there was the planning was rough. That's all. So rant over. Uh <laughs> No, but I I mean listen, okay, so like when we compare something like Clone Wars, right? Clone Wars finally had that first step into like, mm, Jedi question. Not necessarily yeah. like, oh, they're amazing and they're wonderful and they are doing the best for No, they are riddled with issues yeah riddled with problems Absolutely. and i think that was such an interesting take on the jedi order and having those conversations of like okay they did some fucked up shit like great also i'm just yep how dare you take that it's away? the fear of the dark side right, right. so like it's 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 like <clears throat> saying that i am so afraid of a thing that I am going to cut off parts of myself in order to avoid ever possibly thinking about that thing and becoming that thing, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the High Republic books cover that so well. Um, I don't know if you read the High Republic books, but they are very good. Uh, And I really enjoy them. (laughs) And it's just, like, this idea that, like, as, uh, as, you know, who the Jedi are they're not perfect and the high republic kind of like showcases that they're not perfect right and that's kind of like the era that the acolyte was was late Mm -hmm. uh high republic right towards the end of the high republic and it's this idea of like oh the jedi used to not be so afraid of the dark side right It, it was it was they 
just followed the will of the force and therefore remained in the light. And that was what they were supposed to do. But something happened between the High Republic and the, the sequels or the prequels that caused something to happen and for them to get super paranoid. Uh, and so it makes sense because there's nobody perfect in this entire world, right? Mm-hmm. Not even the Jedi. And I think that makes them so much more relatable and like understandable as character archetypes than, oh, the Jedi have to be the most perfect cops in the galaxy. Like, <laughs> come on, nobody even likes cops. Nobody likes cops. Uh, <laughs> Especially Nobody not the space cops. cops. Ugh. Oh, Especially gosh. not space cops. I hate the space force. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh goodness, but yeah, I yeah, it's I uh, I like to like I'm inspired by those things in my games all the time, and so like I I I take the the inspiration I get from Star Wars and uh, Stargate. You can see my little Stargate up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I, yeah, I just I like that is usually the basis for for my storytelling. Um, and so when somebody just uh, you know attacks it, I get a little offended. <laughs> yeah, and it makes it like ugh, ah, it's it's like cis white boys on the internet. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm coming for them. They're awful. They're, as a species, terrible. (laughs) And, like... I agree. Why? Why can we not... Is it because... Like, so then you ask those further questions, right? Is it because they were steeped in... The the storyline was, like, oh, maybe Jedis aren't perfect. Is it because it was very POC-heavy? Was it that the main characters were not men? Was it... Was it that we're dealing with morality? Is it... Why? Why could? Why do you? Why do you have to take it away from us? Why? The answer is all of the above, and I don't think that these uh, these people understand that. I don't think that most of them, as you filter down, understand the inherent like racism, sexism, and just all around buffoonery that comes from the ideas that are being disseminated from these influencer types yeah. right the 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 i've been a star wars fan forever but all i have ever done is hate star wars uh like <laughs> and they listen to they listen and like they feel heard and all of a sudden they go from uh well, yeah, get back into politics it's the exact same reason yeah. why people who you thought were once reasonable became like die hard like mega yeah. people right people that you had respect for and like you know you might have had some differences but like they weren't bad people until they were and it's just it appeals to this part of their brain that uh makes them feel less alone and so what happens is they group together and they want to feel seen and so like i am (sighs) Should I say that? Uh, <laughs> I am friends with a movie star. Uh, this movie star is somebody who wishes, he's the first person to wish me happy birthday every single year. Um, he is not a big movie star. He is talented. Um, I'm not going to say the movies he was in because, you know. Uh, but I, we'll I had a conversation out. with him. He went to school with my parents. And uh, I had this conversation with him uh, when he made a post of, it's really hard to be a white man in Hollywood right now. Oh, no. Because he was having a hard time getting roles. And I, I approached him and I said, listen, I understand what you mean. I understand where you're coming from. That does not mean that it's correct. And just because it is a little bit harder for you as a white man now to get a starring role in something that isn't a horrible, you know, Christian movie or, you know, some weird, you know, conservative movie. Just because of that doesn't mean that, like, there's, like, this weird inequality imbalance now. What you are seeing 
is other voices being elevated to where you were. And so talking to him about that, I was just like, listen, just work harder because your black co-stars, your women co-stars, everyone who is not this incredibly handsome and chiseled white man playing firefighter number three in the OC. Uh, oh, crap. That's actually a role. Uh, <laughs> Look that up. <laughs> Look it up. Uh, who is it? Who is it? <laughs> and uh, just because, just because like of that, doesn't mean that like you're not going to be able to find these roles. You just need to work harder. You need to put in the amount of work that your co-stars have been putting in their entire lives. Mm -hmm. And he he deleted the post. You know he he took what I said to heart, which is great. You know, uh, but also it's just like you know. Also, man, like here's the thing. And this was before the whole Gina Carano situation. Yeah. So uh, if, I, if, if that had happened, I would have just referenced that. But, you know, to say you complaining like this is not going to do you any favors. It's not going to, you know, all of a sudden lead you to getting a big role. Instead, it's going to alienate people. And your co-stars are going to look at you. And they're going to look at you and go, ooh, I don't know if I want to work with that guy. Mm-hmm. So it's really easy pe for people to feed the monster inside of inadequacy. And that's mm -hmm. really what it is, is this feeling of deep inadequacy uh, that all of us can have at all yeah. times. And basically just feeding that monster until all of a sudden you're saying things that aren't true and are harmful to other people. Right. Because you don't feel like you are worth what you're worth. And it's just about, you know, hey, look at yourself, work harder, and that is okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Like, it's it's sometimes when they see other people kind of, like, pushing that, 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 that feeling of, like, I feel less than, and then find an outer group instead of like, hey, mm -hmm. those feelings are just feelings you've kind of put on yourself kind of thing. Right. Instead of, and then just like, yeah, it's just easier to put it on someone else. And I'm like, exactly. it's not my fault for mm -hmm. being this way. It's them. And just having that other feeling is just, I don't know. And then people capitalize it and you have other people that are saying, yeah, you're correct. And then it's a vicious cycle of just like, echo chambering that same ideal and then like oh these people agree with me this feels good that i'm being agreed with and it's not my fault it's somebody else's and it's like exactly and it's gross. it's the inability to to internalize the blame that really is on your own shoulders and nobody wants to be at fault or in charge of their own destinies and instead they would much rather uh just blame anybody new on the scene mm -hmm. and it's sad and it leads to this weird isolationist like thing mm -hmm. that all of a sudden you have a bunch of people grouped together who all of a sudden feel like they mean something together and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm we're yelling at them and someone needs to but also at the same time i feel so bad because like i know deep down everybody is reachable <laughs> so that that cost of reaching individuals is just very high on other people as well i'm not saying not it do it i'm saying that like it's doable for those who can endure it mm -hmm. and who can will put in the time like right recently i've just kind of figured out that like some of the ideas that i thought like oh yeah pronouns are easy uh, that's not not a big deal and then my father's like i don't get it i'm like oh cool <laughs> yeah. all right let's 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 break break some shit down <laughs> I don't, I don't know. and i'm like all right well yeah when i get back up when all three of the the your kids come we'll talk about it again <laughs> let's just like yep. i need some backup here because you're just getting nowhere right now <laughs> yeah 
I, it's it's funny. My dad's kind of the same way too, right? Like I I love my dad. Me and my wife, we like being around my dad. He says the worst things sometimes, and it's just at random. Uh, and I'm just like, oh no. And like, there's this um, there's this bass player that is uh, the the child of one of his best friends, and she recently transitioned. And my my dad's known this person since my dad's known this kid longer than he's known me because he adopted me, uh, like, and uh, it's he had you know once he starts drinking, uh, we were watching this band perform at a fest at a at a at the fair. And, uh, you know, he, he's like, ah, it doesn't matter. I've known them, you know, for so I'm like, but it does matter. It really, it really does. Because, like, everybody's seeking validity in their identity. And so just, just the simplest thing of, like, recognizing who they've chosen to be mm-hmm. means the world, especially from somebody that they have known since they were... Mm-hmm three years old so yeah it's like that that interpersonal like jk rowling bullshit right that like no how many people felt so abandoned by someone that said you know what i'm gonna stand up for people who feel some type of way and then then and then double down i think it's the double downing that like was the worst part right because sure you can have shitty opinions but then you learn and you grow but then you double down yeah so and then you double down and then you double down and then all of a sudden you're associating yourself with literal nazis literal nazis right i thought we did and you don't realize it Something that happened recently, besides the mold thing, which was funny, (laughs) um, was uh, J.K. Rowling posted something that was like, you know, people agreed with. Everybody agreed with it, except for her followers. And she didn't post for like a week and a half afterwards because every single thing was like, what are you talking about? Like, that's, you know, these people. It, oh, I remember. It was about um, the riots happening in the UK, right? Mm-hmm. And she condemned the riots happening in the UK because, I don't know if you know, but essentially kids were killed. And then people, uh, somebody said, oh, it was uh, Muslim in- immigrants. And uh, unfortunately, like, the mob just formed. And they started to burn down mosques. They started to, you know, go after Muslim-owned businesses and, like, terrible, terrible things. Um, And then come to find out, the person who did it, they ended up releasing their name specifically to try and stop the violence because they're like, this person was not a Muslim. Technically, they were, like, a Christian. Like, they, you know, were born in the UK. Like... And J.K. Rowling pointed it out and said, oh, you know, this violence against the Muslim community needs to stop. And all of a sudden, her followers started tearing her a new one. And I think for I think that was probably the first moment where she she probably looked at it and went. Who are these people that are following me? (laughs) Because she didn't post for like a week and a half after that. Um and that's just what happens when you like surround yourself with hate all the time Mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you're in this bubble and then you don't realize who you've let into your bubble. Ooh, Mm. absolutely not. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. I know this is not a politics podcast. I, (laughs) It's a whatever the fuck we say yeah. in this podcast, to be honest. We, it's all inter- well, okay, so really, it's all it's all interconnected. We we it all identify the things happen in the outside world, happen in game, and sometimes it's nice to to play a game of pretend while the world is on fire with our friends. Yes, absolutely. Um, you, you have, have to support to. the right people. You have to mm-hmm. think about your actions as. They could be interpreted from other groups of people, and maybe, you know, it's not, it's mm-hmm. not bad to learn. Like, that's no, it. No, not at all. Yeah, it, it, 
it just also helps to kind of get those thoughts out there and to understand who you are as a person and in order for the people around you to like okay i fuck with this guy or don't, don't fuck with this guy you know <laughs> which i'm totally down with if you don't fuck with me i don't fuck with you kind no, of I, I, like, I, I know my I, positions yeah. okay <laughs> yep i wore Absolutely. this shirt uh today um it says you don't hate mondays you hate capitalism <laughs> um and my what i, I oh you almost I knocked really, over yeah, your, no, well okay. no there's tape on it there's tape on it okay. for that exact reason. <laughs> um, but I told my boss, uh, or he was reading it while I was at work. He's like, are you like one of them communists? I'm like, yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. yeah. He's like, my son's one of them too. I don't know what's <laughs> wrong with y'all people. Oh, you're young people. You're young people. And, he's, <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I mean, whatever, man. Listen, we just have to identify, you have to call capitalism out where it is, right? People are Mm -hmm. having a bad time. Why? Because of capitalism. And if Mm -hmm. we start associating specifically the the man-made problems that we currently experience can be solved. Yep. They can be solved. It's, It's such a radical idea to want to actually benefit from the work and, you know, things that you're doing. Right. Mm-hmm. And capitalism, I'm not benefiting from, well, I am right now because I'm a game master for hire and I work for myself. <laughs> but when I was working at a corporation who fired me for a meltdown, uh, <laughs> you know, I was not. And uh, yeah, it's um, my network is struggling. Good. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's 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 just um, it's it's weird when people can't like view things objectively and with mm-hmm. critical reasoning skills. Um, well, yeah, because they immediately go to the, like, if you don't like it, why don't you leave? And I'm like, that's not that's not how this works. I'm in a relationship with this this thing, I'm, and also I don't have enough money. Uh, <laughs> You're right. It costs a lot. Do you want to pay for me to be able to move to uh, the People's Republic of Ireland? <laughs> uh, go ahead. I'll go. Uh <laughs> <laughs> colonizer yeah. mentality it's not good here so let me leave Ugh. yeah <laughs> first of all the famine brought me here in the first place <laughs> <laughs> which once again was caused by capitalism yeah people going to the people who they said that they're the 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 lords that were saying that they were going to take care of of the people and I pay money for me to be taken care of and I have walked my entire family down this giant fucking road which is by the way stunning um that's a that's a wild because I took a, a tour through Ireland um in college and we specifically drove through like the the one of the famine roads and we were like oh my god it's so pretty oh my god it's, it's the landscape is absolutely gorgeous but then, like, every once in a while, like, every yeah. mile, mile and a half, um, there's a shrine because a, a whole family just perished right there. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, because they they didn't want to give food. Like, the food was not available for people. Right? There, yeah, the, there was, the food was available. I mean, they just weren't allowed to eat it. Right. That's the worst part, right, is, like... Uh, and listen here, UK listeners. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, you no, know, no. Tell Emily Graymore right now. 1776. No, 1776. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> listen, you know, it's... Uh, I will tell Emily. I love Emily. I, I'll, I'll tell it. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll say it. Uh, Call her like, right now. Let's go. <laughs> when, like, Ireland existed to feed England at that point. And so Mm -hmm. they had other food. They were growing other food. They had livestock. They were sending every bit of it to England. And they weren't allowed to have it. They were only allowed to have one type of food, which is a food you can survive on if if you have it and that's all you have, potatoes. Mm -hmm. And so when all of a sudden... Uh, the potatoes were no longer available due to famine or due to, you know, a disease. Mm -hmm. They weren't allowed, like, even as they were, like, an entire country of people were dying, England still said, nope, you can't have that food. We need to move it back to England so we can feed our people. And it's just, like, ridiculous, you know? So all famines are caused by capitalism and by human actions, that's just how it goes. 
<laughs> the basis of the the classic Pixar film uh, Bugs Life. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, not afraid of one ant, but the entire colony mm-hmm. gets together. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> also, the basis I'm pretty sure for the movie Ants twin film yeah we yeah. came out very yeah. close together uh, <laughs> both very good movies in my opinion uh i think they both hold up very well uh <laughs> but yeah i want to see ants again it's been so long oh, it's great in fact i'm probably gonna suggest that to my wife when i get done with this where we're, we're gonna go watch ants <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna be stoked <laughs> hell yeah so oh goodness do you have any um do you have any projects that you can kind of like keen us on to right now or like hint yeah at and you're currently so, working on absolutely mostly because i don't know what secrets mean and um, <laughs> what is supposed to be an inside thought and what's supposed to be an outside thought uh and as such when i have an idea i immediately blurt it out to the world um mm-hmm. so uh pink security and more is going to be coming out uh Hopefully by the end of October, because my delivery date was October, but, you know, it's Kickstarter. Uh, Who actually knows if it's going to come out in October or if it's going to come out in December. It's going to come out this year. That's what matters. I want it to be good. Uh, And so Andrew is going to be doing my layout. I've paid a bunch of artists. Uh, I've got a piece from Barnaby in it. I've got a piece from uh, some amazing artists. and that was kind of the whole reason why I did it, because it's great to be able to commission people to make the things in your head. Um, and I was really excited to to hire artists to do that. Um, so Pink Security is a setting that me and my wife uh, came up with almost like a few weeks after I got fired. Uh, and it is the first like novel that I finished. It was graphic novel, so it's shorter, but it was still mm-hmm. a novel. Um, yeah, it's it's and, still a, a story. Yeah, yeah. It's no, story. We're, we're not gonna fight you here. <laughs> this is not the podcast and for that. Someday, I really would love to have it drawn and released as a, as a graphic novel. But uh, when Andrew and I talked to Spencer from Gila RPG at Gen Con last year, he was like, "Hey." Uh, yeah, I just do zine quest. I raise money during zine quest. And I was like, oh, that sounds cool. I forgot about it. Uh, I was supposed to be working on an idea that whole time. Um, and then Andrew's like mid January, he's like, zine quest starts in a couple weeks. Do you have anything? And I was like, yeah, obviously I do. Uh, and so I took the manuscript and not the manuscript. I took the obsidian files, um, of which is my note-taking app of uh all of the lore for pink security and i was like how can i rearrange this in such a way that makes a good setting book and so that's what i did with it i i i made a setting book which is a post post apocalyptic hope punk junk punk setting in which the people after the apocalypse finally go we kind of need each other to survive uh there are so many resources left over from the idiots from before uh there is so much trash and they go into the cities and they begin to clean it up and they begin to rebuild the world and so it's like the dawn of the new civilization uh and so my uh, for this story uh or setting it takes place in dump city uh which is um uh so I'm just, somebody's going to be listening and they'll be like, woo, uh, which is based <laughs> off of uh, Kansas City. Um, and so, like, I know Kansas City, like, bo- most boring place in the world. It's literally the center of America, right? It is it is the heartland. And mm-hmm. there's a convenient river, uh, which is, you know, <laughs> needed for uh, especially rebuilding society. And so, essentially, it's uh, it's based off of Kansas City and, like, you know the great plains region is known as the american wasteland because of whatever destroyed the world uh i never really touch on that uh (laughs) like concretely because i want people to be able to build their own stories off of it um but like i mentioned things about war i mentioned things about climate change i mentioned how like the world is slowly beginning to heal and um with that uh i i you know created 
I've created that. It's in layout right now. It's gone through editing. That's going to get released. And because of that, I am going to be doing a uh, mini series for it with the original characters from the graphic novel. Uh, and I've talked to you about this, Adrian. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> where you know i just want to tell a story now what i have not told anybody Ooh. is i'm not going to be game mastering it <gasps> i'm going to uh -huh. be playing it because uh i realized i am so close to this setting and so close to the stories and the people like that i've created that i was it was it was harder for me to uh decide what was actually entertaining and what was like not entertaining uh and what i was writing and so i've tapped i'm not going to announce who that is yet but i've tapped Ooh. an amazing game master who you know runs cypher system which is the setting that or the system i want to use um for this uh, to to run it, and I'm just going to be playing one of the characters uh, so that uh, I can run Squadcast uh, <laughs> uh, and, you know, do the editing and stuff because, you know, it's going to be a lot easier if I'm there. I know what to edit around and what to fix. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm really excited about that because I want to... Uh, I, I really want to, like, tell this awesome story or have this awesome story be told in this world. Um and uh yeah it's that that's the big thing uh any other things i'm probably not gonna do zine quest this year because i've i've promised myself the next time i release a book uh it's gonna be finished before it hits the crowdfunding stage mm -hmm. uh because you know i'm totally capable of having a completed manuscript and to have paid for half of the art uh slowly over the course of a year uh, it's the printing and the editing and the layout and all of the actual expensive parts about publishing that I now understand uh, <laughs> that uh, really, you know, uh, need need to be focused on. Um, probably, I, I think that's about it. Uh, we're still recruiting for Eye of the Tyrant Season 2, um, but it's one of those things where I'm kind of waiting on Moonbeam to release uh for those for people who don't know what moonbeam is no one does um but <laughs> it's uh it's actually this streaming platform that is kind of like discord but like a streaming platform and so they recommend uh -huh. that you have a discord community for it and then you use moonbeam for the streaming and so you can offer your realm which we ended up buying a realm mm -hmm. uh to uh like offer other people to stream on it and the whole premise of the thing is like the streamers get all of the money that you know comes in except for like a small amount while um, they encourage you to multi-stream everywhere else, which is not what most platforms do. Yeah, Usually they like, they're like, we're gonna target you if you you know are multi-streaming. Moonbeam wants to do that. And so uh, my goal is to uh, do the second season of Eye of the Tyrant streamed on Moonbeam. <laughs> so we'll see. So that's where I'm at. Hell yeah. That sounds like so much fun. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah i might have to ask you know ask you about some publishing stuff when i start creating like I guess absolutely it's it's a lot it's a, yeah. stop stop saying yeah. Ha yeah i'm more than happy to to uh send you every artist that i used um because they're all amazing people and that was kind of what i was looking for out of my artists was to yeah. be you know good people and good artists um and any resource that i have i am I ask Wes from Roll for Impact. Uh, I will, I mean, you've seen it. You've experienced it already. I'll drone on and on about all the knowledge I have <laughs> if it is going to be helpful to you. Hell yeah. <laughs> all right. That sounds like a good time. Um, where can they find you? Absolutely. You can find me personally uh, as DJ the GM. That was a recent change. Um in a couple of places, not a whole lot. Uh, I think specifically threads right now and Instagram. I don't use either very much, but I'm getting better at using threads. And One Shots Tavern um, on Instagram, Blue Sky, threads, Facebook, um, 
all of the places TikTok, and it's always just at One Shots Tavern. So S H O T S Tavern. Um, captions don't like that, and for some reason, it always uh, auto corrects it to One Shot Seven. Uh, so One Shots <laughs> Tavern, uh, or easier go to one shots tavern.com where you can find all of our social media links our patreon and everything else we do including my game master for higher stuff on start playing games there we go uh it's nice not like i have to say that at the end of every episode <laughs> <laughs> oh and of course the podcast that's, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah 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 <laughs> <I mean>, uh... <laughs> <laughs> one shot tavern anywhere podcasts are distributed <laughs> hey, we got we got to it we're good <laughs> yeah it was eventually it's fine we didn't forget anybody oh, uh, <laughs> I, totally I don't know why remembering to talk about the podcast is always the hardest part <laughs> watch me feel this fun. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, dear listener, for joining us on another episode of Dungeons & Degrees. You can find us wherever pods are cast. Please like, subscribe, whatever you need to do to continue supporting us. Um, It's free. I don't know if you know that. Uh, You don't have to pay anything to just, (laughs) like, put a little heart. Um, You can also uh, tweet at your local uh, uh, Disney Plus representative to get Manny Jacinto's arms back on the screen Mm -hmm. because... That is a national crime. That is a crime against everybody. Not just not just me, not not just DJ, like everybody. Um mm-hmm. you can also find us on all social media sites at Dungeon the letter N as in no you shouldn't cancel the acolyte and degrees. Um and you can also <laughs> join us on Patreon. Uh we've got all those places. Come come join us, please. It's so much fun. All right. Thank you so much for listening. My name's Adrian. And I'm Alex. And I'm DJ. Go have some fun. Woo! That was the cleanest we've had. That was so good. (laughs) You come in here trying to trash talk yourself, trying to tell us that other people would be better. Absolutely not. (laughs) Not this podcast. Not this town, buddy. (laughs) With the hoodie Mm -hmm. up and the finger guns. It's what you got to do, you know? Sunglasses. I sorry. No, it's okay. Trademark sunglasses. Let's go. <gasps> Trademark sunglasses. <laughs>